Hello and uh, welcome to another lived quality conversation. And today uh, my guest is Bashir. I know Bashir from uh, our community and we, we've, we know him in many capacities. Uh, we run together, we participate in our community together and uh, he also works in technology. And today uh, he's joining me and we're going to just have a a nice conversation as it is here on Live Quality Conversations and see what we can learn from it and where the conversation takes us. Um, so welcome, Bashir. Uh, yeah. Maybe if we can start with uh, how you've been and what is probably on your mind. Uh, been quite busy. Um, Saturday itself is a day full of... Um, Errands, so it's quite packed with activities, and uh, yeah, there's um, upcoming travel for me, so that's on my mind. So uh, still have a few things to do around the house, uh, and then um, get a few things to go. So there's still a lot to fit into the weekend, and uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's usually how weekends go. <laughs> we save up things from the week to kind of execute them at the weekend when we should be probably trying to relax, but that's that's how things work out anyways. Um, yeah, yeah, so what, what what has been on your mind and uh, what some, some of the thoughts, uh, you know, we, we had a, a chat about work last time and you had some interesting thoughts there. Uh, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I think regarding my thoughts around work, I think any activity that involves one applying their skill sets or experience uh, to gain satisfaction, so I would regard that as work. And the reason I say satisfaction, you know, it could be in various ways. It could be Mentally, it could be physically, it could be um, monetary, it could be satisfaction could be many in many forms. So any sort of activity that involves that, I think for me, I will regard as work. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's the same for me. Uh, it, it's almost like a like a life thing. Uh, from from the few descriptions. Uh, people have been giving me, it feels like the same way you've described it, right? Like work is this big overarching uh, category of all the things we do. And we have many jobs that are part of our work. And so uh, we're always um, doing work, uh, but in different, uh, different aspects and different categories. Um, it, it, it's interesting in Australia here, they, when you work, uh, when you, when you file your taxes, sometimes they, there's that option. They ask you about, uh, do you do unpaid work? Uh, so <laughs> I'm curious in your work, do you have, uh, work you consider to be in that category and what is that like for you? Uh, I wouldn't consider an, an, you know, unpaid work that I would declare to the government. You know, I think they're looking for either if you're doing volunteer work with an organization where, um, you know, there's no pay. I think that that's what I think the government is asking. But I think, you know, there are other aspects um, of work that I do that uh, I don't think the government might be interested in. For example, I do a, I do a lot of mentoring, which, like in my description, involves applying my experience to guide um, graduates or people changing careers into the space that I work in. So sometimes uh, I have a couple of sessions a week, sometimes none, sometimes three sessions. 
So it's sort of an ongoing activity for me. To me, I would regard that as work, and I, you know, I have dedicate dedicate time for it. Um, and uh, depending on who needs time, you know, there's free time in my calendar that is there deliberate to do things like this. Um, so I think for me, it will just be mentoring. I would still regard it as work. Um, it's still sort of rewarding to me, sort of satisfaction. And um, yeah, so I think that's the only one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I, I recently had the same opportunity to do a bit of uh, mentoring to someone who reached out to me uh, through LinkedIn. Like a message just popped up and uh, they, they say that seen me contribute to a training program that they were part of. And, uh, you know, they, they were reaching out now, um, to seek for more advice, you know, work on their resume, try to ask what kinds of questions they should expect, how to prepare themselves, uh, as they try to find, um, another job. And, you know, just like you said, I had to create, I had to carve out time out of my (laughs) availability to make time for this because, uh, at some point, I also needed uh, a mentor, and I, I somebody gave their time, somebody answered my questions. Uh, so it is work, and, and surprisingly, like when I would be preparing uh, to meet this person, I would, you know, I I would go back through some of the questions they've been asking, read uh, the material they've sent me, uh, so that I'm in a, a better position to be able to support them as they need uh, the kind of support that they're asking for. Uh, So it does take work in that sense. And um, and another thing you touched on there is like the the great satisfaction that comes with that. And and for me, uh, a few weeks, you know, later when we had been doing this, uh, when um, uh, this person, messaged me and said they had now found a job uh, after we had helped fine-tune their resume. That was very satisfying. It's like now all of a sudden, uh, the the time that I had to carve out and the things I had to not do <laughs> so that I could be available, all of a sudden felt rewarded. Um, so I think you're very spot on with that. Um, yeah, like it, it, the, the satisfaction is always there, especially once you see the job through, uh, once you, you do it to the point where, uh, you know, it, it needs to get to. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's 100% correct. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that we may not regard as work, but it's actually work. Um, it could be something, you know, I don't think any other person would regard mentoring as work, but I think it's work and because uh, it involves you spending time, involves you applying your knowledge uh, and experience to help someone else. So to me, like you said, it's, it's work. Yeah. And, and so like, one other thing that I, I would be interested in is it's sort of like where does the motivation come from to do this kind of uh, this kind of work? Uh, because you do, uh, I would say, you're involved in uh, so many of these uh, kind of uh, how can I say like giving uh, gi- <laughs> these activities that require you to give of yourself, uh, you know like what you run for our community, this, the number of things you get involved in there, uh, the different communities you take part in. Um, I'm curious about that. Like what, what motivates you to, uh, to give of yourself in that way? And, uh, what ki- and how have these things been, uh, you know, satisfying to you such that you keep continuing to do them? I mean, there's, that's true. There's a lot of things that I get involved in. 
and um, I think it's in my nature to help in a number of ways. I had to deal with, uh, you know, uh, things that are half cooked or to do things that are not correct uh, uh, or to deal with what someone would call mediocrity, you know, if it's not good enough. Uh, so in, in some of these communities or activities that I'm involved in, I see gaps or I saw gaps and I saw maybe I can apply myself in some of these things. Again, going back to um, applying my skills and experience to improve how things work, improve how uh, communities work, improve, you know, lives of other people. You know, if you look at everything that I'm involved in, it's around that purpose and it involves applying, you know, knowledge, time, you know, experience to improve how things work. So I think, you know, what drives me is the need to improve things, the need to see better, the need to to um, um, I guess to need to improve we need to be better and you know for every every um, for everything I'm involved in so I try to, to give my, my best to it and uh, you know where I don't know I'll learn or find out you know to make it happen yeah, uh, yeah, that that's uh, that definitely resonates with me because you know earlier today I was writing up um, a blog post uh, about the pursuit of uh, purpose. We ha- we recently had a conversation uh, with a friend about that, and uh, so it, there were quite some ideas that were still hanging in the air for me. So I was, I was spending some time to sort of like write that out. And some of the things you've mentioned there, like, um, you know, being sensitive to uh, mediocrity, like, you know, when you notice that something is below this, the, the expectation, right? Like this, you, 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 you have this sensitivity for this could actually be better. And um, I think I have the ability to bring that better version about and so you that sort of like pulls you into uh trying to close those gaps uh, that you you start to see in those in those activities and in the process also gives you the opportunity to actually apply uh your skills um and abilities in a different way that you probably were not uh originally <laughs> preparing yourself for you know, like you had these skills, you are you are, you are cultivating them for a different purpose, but then uh, all of a sudden this scenario presents itself to you, and you you sort of have uh, this insight of like, wait, actually I have this thing, this ability that I can apply in this way, and um, it could help reduce this unnecessary mediocrity that I am sort of like uh, experiencing right now, and so. I agree with that. I think we we sometimes don't uh, get sensitive enough to <laughs> to apply uh, that those same kind of skills that we have, like all of us, to to the mediocrity that happens in our lives. And it's a big challenge. It's like you can't, you probably cannot do that for everything. Uh, you can only do within your skill set, right? Like there are things that. Uh, which will you 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 may notice the mediocrity and you still then you realize you you don't have the tools in your in your in your toolbox and uh, then of course you'd excuse yourself and go like you know what maybe that's not something that I can apply myself to uh, I will just focus on these other things that uh, I apply myself to and 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 the, another thing you touched on there was the the becoming better yourself in the process uh yeah because like i also noticed it like the more um the more i apply myself like give of what i have like it's sort of there's a reverse effect where it creates the gap 
of what I need to add on. Um, so in that same conversation I had with uh, Wana, we, 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 we discussed a bit about that, whereby you have these, you have these gifts, right? Like that you, you are always cultivating through the things you do. And at some point, you will fill up, right? Like you, you will feel like you, you've, you've learned everything that you need to learn, right? Uh, however, when that happens, sometimes you feel like uh, you're a bit complacent, like you don't need to learn anymore, you don't want to engage. Uh, but I think uh, it's it's at that point that it, you 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 have now to start giving of the things that you've learned, like actually, so that they can you can empty out all the things that you collected, uh-huh. and then create room uh, for you to be able to now uh, cultivate other gifts. And then, you know, because you can't, you can't grow if there is no space, right? <laughs> the, no. It's so all, it's all compact, you can't grow. So you uh-huh. need to create some space in there. Uh, uh, and that space will allow for you to grow. Because uh, what's that saying about uh, the best way to learn something is to teach it? It's like uh-huh. if, you, if, you, if you start to actually demonstrate, like I knocked out some of these skills in those situations like you know that life throws at us um you quickly get to their limit you quickly reach the limit of the the application of what you you collected you you start to say like oh i thought i really knew uh how to do this thing so well um but it seems i can only do it to this level so there's all these other things that if i wanted to improve that i would need to learn uh, and and you probably noticed this even with uh, uh with fitness right like you know when we when you're running it's like oh okay i need to beat my time for me to improve my time by this much uh i need to improve my discipline as well so that i can be more consistent and get closer to achieving that goal um yeah, I know, I know I've said a, quite a, a few things. I'll pass it back to you and, and see what you make of that. Yeah, I think with the unpacking or or sharing what you have, I mean, um, I didn't realize, you know, you're definitely spot on. I didn't realize that uh, I knew that people would need this information but I didn't realize how big people need this information. It's until I started in 2022, you know, uh, to mentor people, and this is free. And, you know, I've found that by sharing this information, um, you know, some of the questions that the um, participants that, you know, uh, come to this session, first of all, the sessions I've been attended by people all over the world, you know, and from Canada, US, you know, India, South Africa, you know, Australia, obviously, um, Japan. Um, so they have, they all have sort of different questions, but my experience will apply in all these countries. It's just the context that will be different. So, you know, sometimes they ask a question and then I have to go back and think about it and go and learn something new uh so then you know if i i'm not sure you know say for this question i'm not sure uh but i may need to go back and and go and and research that so i think you know every time you speak to someone new or you know um share you know uh, a conversation you know sharing an experience is an opportunity for you to learn as well so that's what that's why i think you know sharing sometimes you might think uh, you know everything and then you get complacent, like you said. But, you know, as you share, there will be people that um, are experienced. There's some people that are experienced in, in, in my space have attended uh, some of the sessions. And, you know, in some things they have said, yeah, you're spot on. In other things they have given the, in their experience, um, you know, what else could work or what version would work better. So it's an opportunity for me to to learn as well from some of the participants, especially some of the experienced people that turn up to this session. So I think 
sharing also sort of helps to fine tune um, um, your knowledge uh, of something, um, your experience, because you can only tell something from your experience. But if someone else has experienced the same thing and, and has got better results, then you want to use that experience as well or share that experience uh, in a story or you know whatever format uh, you know you could say it in reported speech you know and share that because you want you you want to help that person get the best results so you want to give them the best knowledge mm -hmm. that you have uh, for them to go and, and get the best results so you know I agree hundred percent. Yeah, wow, that that's uh, that's wonderful. Like um, all, all the things that you're applying there when you're doing this, uh, you touched on a couple of things that you know as you're sharing that, um, it, like during those uh, sessions, uh, which are sort of like you're running at a global level, so you have lots of different people from different backgrounds, different cultures, all coming together. And that always, uh, if you're not, how can I say, like if uh, if you're not skilled at uh, handling things like uh, conflict, uh, that can end up being a, a scenario where things blow up because you have all these different uh, contexts trying to meet together. Um, and 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 from what you're sharing, it seems like you're using a lot of uh, uh, like honesty whereby you sort of like uh, declare the things that you know and the things that you don't know and you, you're just being very clear about them so that uh, people are not getting confused unnecessarily uh, and being stuck on, on uh, how can I say, like unconfirmed expectations or unverified expectations. Um, and also which feeds into... Uh, integrity whereby you, you're trying to uh, maintain a space whereby uh, there's a bit of consistency in what is expected and and usually if you're if you're working at at such a level you know at a global level you do need that um, and and that also involves uh, acknowledging that you know whatever you have and what you're offering it may not actually work for everyone, uh, but also maintaining that openness, as you've shared, um, to learn from those who may come in and they're a bit more experienced. Uh, because it, it, whenever, like, I, I don't even know how, the correct terms to use to, to describe it well, because experience, as they say, is the best teacher, right? <laughs> it's like, you may know... <laughs> You may know so many things, and then this person doesn't know the many things, but they know the one thing you don't know. <laughs> uh. And that's and that is what you needed. And it's like both of you needed each other. They need all the ninety percent you knew, and you you needed the ten percent they know, which is their only ten percent. <laughs> like for them, that ten percent is their ninety percent, and for you, <laughs> it's 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 what you are you are missing. And so, I think through those uh, shared experiences and, and acknowledging, uh, you know, in an open way that, like, you don't have it all, it, even in that act of, of ac acknowledging even just to yourself, it sort of, like, automatically opens the door for you to have, um, to be able to see when something new uh, turns up. Uh, but sometimes we get closed off to those things, especially when, you know, when we're becoming complacent and start running the assumptions like, nah, I know it all. What are you talking about? It's like, I know everything. Leave me alone. <laughs> uh. Uh, but no one, no one can actually know everything. Uh, and we should always um, aim to fine tune, like, you, you, you know, how I put it, like fine tune and improve upon our knowledge. And uh. as they say, the devil is in the detail. <laughs> It's uh, all about getting in the details. So the more we get into the details of something, uh, the more we start to uh, pull out the things that were there, but we had not actually noticed because all along we didn't think there was something else. 
It's like you have you 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 have to first acknowledge that ah, oh, maybe there's something else, right? Uh, I, before you can look, otherwise you will not even be motivated to look. Uh, so that's that's quite very interesting what you're working on there. And uh, I, I think you know when when we bring it back to work, it's like yeah, that's that is that is a very good i would say approach to work and work ethic um and probably it cuts across all your other works i would even imagine uh, i don't know what what do you what do you think of that uh, not necessarily um but maybe i could say in my work um I try to pick out important bits that can, that I can share with people that I mentor like every time I'm you know doing a particular piece of um work either paid or unpaid work I pick out something that I can share so depending on you know um depending on what I'm doing and what I think even if I'm through work, I come to a realization, you know, a light bulb moment, and I say, I think this is important for someone who is starting out uh, in this area. It's good for them to know. So I keep that as a mental note, and every time or sometime when I get to speak about that particular that particular thing, like I'll have real clarity to say, you know, you know, if you do A, B. You definitely get C because it's taken a bit of time for me to think about it, experience it, use my skill. And now I know if you do A, B, you won't get D, you won't get E, you won't get whatever. It will be C. So I'll be sort of very certain. So I, I have those sort of moments. But it, I won't say that my mentoring work sort of cuts across. I guess it's it's part of the the my life, I guess. But... I don't share everything. I share something that is particular with the with my with my mentoring. You know, if something is connected to to that, you know, I may tell it in a story, and but not necessarily that it cuts across. Mm. 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 That that makes sense. Uh, and so you try to uh, sort of like prioritize. Uh, sort of, uh, how, how can I call it? It's uh, the term is uh, compartmentalized, right? Compartmentalize the the mentoring and uh, associate uh, things that fit with it just to the mentoring. Um, the, the like I I feel like the the, the mentoring can also be uh, the same. How do I describe it? Like the same spirit that drives you to mentor, like you know, to try and improve upon mediocrity. Uh, I think that's what I was sort of trying to allude to before, because I think those same uh, sensibilities you use in, in sort of like trying to identify the gaps, trying to see how to improve, uh, trying to see what insight is needed there. You still use those same faculties when you're out in the world and, you know, you, 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 you're you looking at, uh, let's say, you know, organizing your garage, for example, it's still going to be the same strategy through which you see, it. you know, you identify the gaps and you try to see uh, what skills can you use to apply to this space and bring about improvement or in your exercise. Uh, you're still using the same approach of, uh, you know, being like really honest about uh, where you are at the time, being honest about your current uh, discipline practices and ac acknowledging all that before you bring about improvement. So that's what I think. I think in a way like they would sort of, you, you'd end up having to do it the same way because um, what I'm driving at is it, it's sort of like your one of your method of approaching life, uh, you, you come at it from uh, that space where you, you're, you're prioritizing uh, honesty, integrity, and uh, 
consistency and uh, clarity. Um, yeah, how how does that fit? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think uh, the last statement, clear, and um, you know, remove uncertainty. You know, and uh, yeah, I think it sort of summarizes that that as you know, the more clearer you are, even when you know you you know in everyday life or even in my mentoring, the better for whoever is listening to you. Um, you know, even if it's at work, you know, they, 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 when you remove ambiguity, I think it sort of helps. And in, in all my, you know, in all my um, mentoring sessions, you know, the first thing I start with, I want to make sure that whoever has come to the session is clear of what is going to be discussed. So whoever mm-hmm. is not clear then can leave at that point. And so that's what I start. So like, you know, you've sort of summarized it well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's that's really good. And so maybe just to, uh, to draw you a bit to some of the other work that you you're always I- involving, you, you know, yourself in. Uh, and also another thing I was going to ask you about is uh, when you see this mentorship program you know, going forward. Uh, how do you see yourself improving it uh, from what it currently is? Uh, and because you've done a lot of work to build it, set it up, and uh, refine it to the level where it is, that now it's going global. Um, so I'm wondering, uh, what, you know, what would you have in store for it? What What's your... What do you envision uh, happening to it as you continue to work on it and, uh, you know, spend uh, more effort on it? Uh, the only, because the, the, that, that program runs once a month. It's an online program. Uh, because of my current um, time, I don't think I want to improve it uh, you know, more than it is um, because then I, w- I won't be doing it effectively. So I want to keep it as mm. is. Uh, it, it used to be that uh, I used to give the session, I, I used to run four sessions. Like I would give the content I'm giving in one month. I used to give the same content in four four months. So I've, mm. I realized that people that came the first time would not come the second and would not come the third. So then I had to come to to condense everything in the one month. So if you come once, you have everything. So I think to me where it is now is okay. Um, and uh, the only way that I'm seeing to improve it, you know, within Queensland is having the same similar program. So I'm working with one of the associations. Um, uh, um, I'm on the committee to sort of have a similar one, but just for mm-hmm. people within Queensland in this space. So, and even internally within our community, I'm slowly by slowly piloting a method that I think might work. So I don't think the other one that I'm running online, I want to make it better, but rather um, have various versions that are running concurrently and uh, yeah, that's 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 what I'm working on regarding that, because I, I have mm. to balance that with everything else that I'm doing. So, yeah, I don't think I, I'll make it any. I'll make the online one any better. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And and uh, you know you you've touched on balancing things there, and I think it's it's really critical. Uh, you know, like and we spoke a bit about this uh, during our book club. Uh, about the the need to sort of uh, balance things and having them fit together. Otherwise, it, it, it could be the what is it the, the the thing that sort of like tips everything over, right? Uh-huh. Uh, you don't want to get to the point where things tip over. So it's really important to be aware of that and and maintain the balance and uh, keep things manageable. So. Uh, 
yeah, that that's really good. Uh, uh, something interesting you mentioned there is like you're piloting something else. Is that something you would want to share something about, or uh, is it still baking under wraps? <laughs> I mean, there's, 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 yeah. it's nothing confidential. So it's basically um, availing my time to people who want to be mentored. If they are keen, mm -hmm. um, I invite them to, you know, tell them when I'm available. If they're available, they can come along and can sort of apply the same thing that I'm doing online, but to more people from our community. And then I'll, I'll see how that goes. But, you know, it's, it hasn't taken off yet. So it's still something that is just slowly getting um, picked up by people who, who, who are keen to do it. Yeah, would this be like in a, you know, like in a professional sense or just more like a personal sense? More professional sense, uh, but more personalized because then I meet one person at a time. So it's not sort mm -hmm. of like a group like the one I was saying before, but it's more one, so it's sort of a personalized one-to-one in-person mentoring, and yeah. No, that's good. And I think more people, so I'm curious, like, how do we get more mentors? It's like, how do we get more mentors? Maybe uh, uh, when you look at the people that have gone through your hands, people who you, you've supported uh, in this way, uh, do they show interest in um, also becoming mentors and uh, have any of them uh, been able to join, you know, you on the side of, of the mentorship and sort of like, because I was thinking about, you know, you could have like a, a community of mentors, right? And right. Uh, then that even makes it, makes mentor, mentorship more accessible because now uh, people could just reach out to the community and whoever, uh, they have more options. They get a bit of uh, options in, in terms of like um, the specific skill sets they need to develop uh, or the specific uh, areas they want to be mentored in. Um, yeah, have, is that something on your radar as well? Or? Uh, not really. Maybe um, generally the people that I have mentored, quote unquote, in various things, various life things, like people I've supported to uh, when they learn into the country, learn how to drive or get this thing or get that thing. So there's sort of a group of mentors in those things. If I get someone who needs those things, you know, I don't have the time to keep doing them. So I send, you know, talk to such as such, they can help you and they have sort of been helpful. But creating a group uh, of mentors is not something I've thought about. These are just people I know um, that I've gone through my hands for whatever thing it is. If I know someone, who needs that same thing, I just say, talk to this person, he will be able to help because I know this person now knows how everything works uh, with that yeah. particular thing. So yeah, mentally, yes, because I, I know um, there are people that can support others, but formally, uh, it's not something that I've, I've um, tried to intentionally build. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I, it is always, you know, a bit challenging to do that as well because then it becomes an extra thing to add among the things that you're carrying, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. It could be another daunting challenge, I would say. Um, yeah. yeah, personally as well. Like, uh, I do like mentoring, but. Uh, I manage it in a way that, you know, it's more like uh, on a, how do they call it in uh, in the tech language? It's more like on a pool basis, right? Like, <laughs> like when somebody reaches out, I'm very willing uh, yeah. to uh, do the mentorship, uh, but I'm not going to 
uh, go pulling the people in because you you know it's another commitment, it's another responsibility you're taking on. So uh, we, and with every responsibility you carry, of course, it comes at uh, an expense in some, in many ways. Uh, so you have to be cognizant of that. Um, yeah. yeah. So I noticed. I think we're coming up to time. And I was uh, wondering, uh, are there any, you know, final thoughts you would like to share and maybe some information about uh, the mentorship program that you're running such that if people are interested in following up on that, uh, learning a bit more about that, where they can go and um, uh, how they can learn more about it? I think... Um... I think with work, anything that takes your time and needs applying skills and experience, you know, is work. So, you know, if you haven't thought about it in that way, I think it is. You just have to think. If it's not bringing you any satisfaction, then it's not work. If it's just taking, mm -hmm. wasting your time. I mean, if it's taking your time and no satisfaction, it's basically wasting your time. Um, in terms of the mentorship, uh, it's programs that I run every month. Uh, if you go to Eventbrite and you search starting a career in cybersecurity, you find it there. They, you know, register. The program runs every last Thursday of the month. And uh, yeah, basically talk, talk about starting a, a career. It's not necessarily, you know, jobs. Uh, you know, getting you a job is basically sharing tips and tricks and tactics that I've applied and, you know, others have applied to get into this space. So just go to Eventbrite and search starting a career in cybersecurity. So that's my final thoughts on that. Yeah, well, thank you, Bashir. It was uh, lovely talking to you and uh, hopefully we can host you again and explore some other interesting subjects. Sure. Thanks for hosting me.